Good morning, dear participants and organizers of the conference, dear panel members and colleagues. Yesterday, there was a brilliant, very productive day of work, and I hope that we shall continue working as successfully today as uh, yesterday. Our chemotherapeutic department, which is headed by Alexei Mikhailovich, uh, and the, the, the surgical department headed by Alexei and uh, my department, we are linked with many years of productive work. And M Mikhail Kishnoitz in September uh, also had a 90 years anniversary. And it's not by chance because 50 years ago when he came to our institution, when there was no chemotherapeutic department, but there was already a department of the gastrointestinal tumors. And his doctoral thesis was also devoted to the complications of the radiation therapy in the uh, colorectal cancer patients. I cannot switch the slides. They do not switch. Could you help me? Can you switch them manually, please? So, Mikhail Gershinovich also had very long uh, relationship uh, with Rurik Alexandrovich Melnikov, who paid great attention his works to the contemporary principles of combination treatment in colorectal cancer patients. So you can see this happened as early as in 1973, and all these principles are the ones that are still um, basic principles for our work. We have been talking a lot about the standards of treatment and diagnostics of colorectal tumors, but the most important are the main approaches that we should stick to in our activities. First of all, this is multidisciplinary approach, uh, contemporary surgical manipulations, MRI staging, but the morphological assessment of uh, the surgical treatment, uh, the pre-operation chemotherapy. In, uh, tailored treatment and improvement of the quality of life. Multidisciplinary approach comprises, uh, first of all, many uh, a team of work, uh, and this is a very tight cooperation between a pathologist, a radiation uh, doctor, a radiologist, uh, the uh, chemotherapist, and the rehabilitologist. Their smooth work and smooth cooperation uh, will facilitate better recovery and the quality of life of a patient. Whether a chemotherapy is of any need uh, and can, can we help uh, our surgeons to treat colorectal cancer? Uh, of course, yes, but where is the evidence? The evidence that I would like to show you come from the huge chemotherapeutic congresses that were organized this year. This is ASCO conference and ESMO conference. In ASCO conference, which uh, analyzed 50 years of experience, we marked that it has already been uh, more than 50 years, but we have uh, toluracil is still the basis of the uh, pharmacotherapy of colorectal cancer. This is golden standard, which is very convenient both for IV and also there are equivalents uh, for um, oral administration. We can predict the uh, toxicity and its uh, radio sen sen sensibilizer as well. It's also very pleasant to mark that in the 70s and in the 60s, the combination chemo radiation therapy and the generally speaking combination treatment, including surgery and chemotherapeutic treatment on the basis of uh, the uh, five uh, toroacil was really paid great attention to. Within the uh, recent 50 years, we have been witnessing the evolution of pharmacotherapy in colorectal patients, but still we have five toroacil, which is the main combination partner in all the contem contemporary schemes and treatment modalities. So we can see the progress and you can see the uh, disseminated metastatic forms of cancer and the locally disseminated colorectal cancers. Uh, all of them at the moment uh, have their pharmaco treatment uh, regimens. But whether adjuvant treatment uh, can help our surgeons, where is the evidence again? I would like to say that um, 
when the tumor is clinically significant and we can diagnose it with all the possible uh, diagnostic ways. In many uh, cases, it, it uh, takes up to eight years nonetheless. This slide, it's uh, something that you are probably familiar with, but it very uh, well illustrates that if a tumor is over two millimeters, it potentially can be associated with remote metastasis. That is why uh, the role of adjuvant pharmaco treatment in many localizations is so important. And the adjuvant chemotherapy of colorectal cancer based on the five flor flor fluorosil is based upon five vast studies. Please allow me to speak about some of them, which were most essential for the development of adjuvant treatment of colorectal cancer. First of all, this is a huge meta-analysis. This meta-analysis, generally speaking, is referred to as uh, a meta-analysis of uh, the era before no adjuvant treatment. It comprised 21 studies, almost 10,000 patients. And please look at this slide. If you add adjuvant treatment to surgical, it, we may reduce the relapse risk by 25%. And if you add adjuvant treatment post main stage of treatment, we can also uh, improve the overall survival data. Uh, reducing the mortality risk by 17 percent. Another uh, vast study. This is an American uh, group study. Please pay attention that Adjuvant treatment is uh, very important in the colorectal cancer patients. Over 50% of patients survive five years, or more than five years, and uh, disregarding, and by the way, in that study, there was no adjuvant. So in this study, we had no adjuvant and chemotherapy. And we can mark significant improvement in the uh, overall and uh, relapse-free survival. Definitely. We cannot question the role of adjuvant treatment in the choice of this in the choice of treatment modality, modalities for this category of patients. Can you switch my slides manually, please, because the uh, these remote controls do not work. So next slide, please. The most important thing which uh, explained us whether we can uh, stick to the 5 fluoro cell only with the biological modifier or we need two component schemes uh, were, was reported in 2014. And that was the result of this ADOR trial, which demonstrated that if you add uh, MIO uh, to MIO regimen axaloplatin, It will allow us to bring down the risk of relapse by 36% and the risk of lethal outcome by 54%. Please pay attention to this. How important the role of uh, a simple um, axillaplatin in the full FOX reg uh, regimen. Further on, whether chemotherapy can anyhow influence the overall uh, and relapse-free survival, because we know that full uh, methodological answer is a surrogate marker of survival in these patients. Bruce Minsky in 2013 marked that chemo radiation is the standard treatment for locally advanced 
clinically resectable uh, rectal cancer in T3 tumor size and or, or any size but uh, lymph nodes positive. But when do we organize the gamma radiation therapy? In adjuvant or in no adjuvant? Please pay attention to the results of the German study who compared the prevalence of relapses depending on where. In the pre- or post-operative period, we administer chemo radiation therapy. If this is chemo radiation therapy, which is provided in the post-operative period, the uh, prevalence of relapses within 10 years' time is accounts for 10 percent. If it is in the pre-operative period, then the value is significantly lower. It's 7.1 uh, percent, although it never ref reflected in the survival figures. So the authors may come to the conclusion that we need more effective and more um, uh, sort of strong no adjuvant pre-operative therapy. But how can we narrow this cohort of patients? We know in our routine practice such patients who do not respond to chemo radiation therapy. How can we uh, define the criteria which cohort of patients will benefit more from this approach as to treatment? So we have three groups of patients, and please pay attention. In the patients with lower risks, we can stick to surgical treatment only. But as soon as we have mesorectal fascia in growth, in growth into mesorectal fascia, we need more sort of um, we, we need stronger approach, including both gamma and radiation therapies. So I have already mentioned that the full response and full pathomorphological response is a most significant marker of survival. This slide shows all the studies that we have currently. And at the moment, it has been demonstrated that the treatment modalities based upon axiloplatin, these are CAPOX uh, re um, uh, regimens, which you know very well. If compared to combination of radiation therapy and 5 fluoroacyl these two component um, regimens statistically significantly improve in number of cases the uh, full response, pathomorphological response. Next slide, please. Just uh, to demonstrate an example, I'm going to show you the protocol design, how the patients were treated. In the pre-operation uh, period, the patients had uh, radiation therapy for approximately one month. There was also a chemotherapy. Usually it was capacitabin uh, out uh, of the radiation therapy day, uh, two uh, tablets per day. And then there was four 12 weeks, four to 12 weeks. And in that uh, particular case, it was eight weeks. And by the way, Professor Prava sort of said yesterday that the longer the period is to um, radiation therapy, the more uh, significant response we get. So after the chemo radiation therapy, when uh, we achieved certain response, patients also were, uh, underwent total mesorectomy. And then there was two control groups. In one control group, the patients were, uh, were on 5-fluorosyl. Uh, and in the other, there was a chemotherapy capox. So in the category in the cohort of patients were we had two component treatment. There was uh, the, there were significant improvement in the relapse-free uh, survival, but at the moment we do not have any methods of radiation, of uh, radio diagnostics, which allow us to assess a full uh, the achievement of full uh, pathological response. Another very interesting. Uh, study which actually 
excited the American Society of Oncologists and uh, the rest of the world, actually, who published guidelines for the year 2015 already. Uh, the design of this protocol is very interesting. No adjuvant for cycles of uh, cupox chemotherapy. Then we have uh, chemoradiation therapy by standard method. Uh, when we achieve effect, standard optimal surgical uh, treatment, TME, then adjuvantly we continue chemotherapy, either cupox or the other sleeve, uh, only monotherapy. And what we received in the end, we would like to mark that the patients who were part of this uh, study, they were very unfavorably, pr unfavorable prognostically. And this slide, which is demonstrated to the overall characteristics of patients, we can see that in the majority of the patients we had locally advanced process with the invasion, uh, lymphovascular invasion, and uh, apart from that, there was huge associated risk that the mesorectal fascia was also impaired. So what we received in the end, uh, after the four cycles of no adjuvant capox chemotherapy, in 62.35%, almost 63, we achieved objective response. Then we continue treating the patients. After additional chemo radiation therapy, we again receive in this category of patients 80% of response and 80% uh, of objective response. I'd like to stress now, look at what beautiful figures we have. It also reflected on the very high values of the full metamorphosis. And the destaging was marked in the majority of the patients with locally advanced, very manifested process in the rectum. Why this modality uh, is to become a new option in the locally advanced uh, cancer. Uh, you can see that there are patients with, you know, massive, no adjuvant chemotherapeutic approach and chemoradiation approach. We can achieve very significant uh, reduction both in the relapse-free survival and in the overall survival as well. And it's very important that the five-year relapse-free survival in the a cohort of high-risk patients accounted for 70 percent, and overall survival is also very high for this category of patients. It's 73.3. And also, I wanted to say that it's uh, 2015. They proposed new option for the locally advanced patients for Folfox or Capox. Uh, regimens and then a combination of uh, chemo radiation therapy plus capacidabin. If you achieve response, then TME. And after that, in adjuvant treatment, it's four cycles of chemotherapy similar to what they had previously. So everything, uh, all in all, the uh, pharmacotherapy will account for six months. Of course, we should also discuss the option without this additional introduction of four cycles of full fox of, or capox. Definitely speaking, we continue moving forward and the tactics that we are currently using, using in our institution and in many other clinics of the world, most frequently we Also, to the study that I have been discussed, that I've been discussing, uh, we um, consider an opportunity of four cycles of capox, then surgical treatment, and then adjuvant treatment based upon capox, then four cycles of chemotherapy, again chemo radiation and uh, survival. These results are not. You know, published yet, but this is exactly what Professor Pravasudov referred to yesterday. After standard adjuvant radiation therapy, we should be waiting from four to 12 weeks. The longer we wait, 
the more there is a probability of achieving full response. For us not to wait these 12 weeks, we uh, plan six no advent cycles of chemotherapy uh, by uh, Xilux, Xilux scheme. And we, shall, we are going to assess uh, whether it has, gives us any benefit uh, to the previous regimens that I've discussed, whether there are any benefits when we feel this period of um, uh, standby with no adjuvant chemotherapy. And please pay attention that the whole emphasis is placed upon the no adjuvant treatment as one of the most significant markers of improvement uh, survival in colorectal patients. Whether chemotherapy can help a surgeon to treat um, uh, patients with uh, synchronous remote metastasis. Very frequently we have such patients who have solitary local metastasis, either in the liver tissue or in the lung tissue. How can we deal with this cohort of patients? So first, although I was asked to not to speak about targeted uh, treatment, but I, I'm going to just briefly mention that all the patients with uh, metastatic colorectal cancer should definitely undergo molecular genetic uh, for um, testing for, uh, for uh, RAS mutation, because this is exactly the uh, mutation that very frequently uh, is uh, marked in uh, colorectal and rectal cancer patients. So it was, generally speaking, very frequently mentioned in uh, publications that those patients who were uh, receiving therapy for sol solitary or uh, multiple metastasis, their survival, uh, five-year survival, is significantly higher. So cytoreductive um, surgeries in four-stage patients uh, allows us to improve survival significantly. Over 50% of them live longer than five years. Another design, another protocol that was uh, reported on in 2014, they demonstrated how the survival is influenced by cytoreductive treatment. And it was demonstrated that a lot depends on the volume of surgery, which was uh, done in R0. In this cohort of patients, the overall and the relapse-free survivals were much better. Apart from that, in this particular study, it was demonstrated that the relapse-free survival after R0 resection is reduced if you uh, take into account mm, multiple metastases in the remote organs. The uh, bigger number of metastases we manage to remove, and, the, uh, and if the uh, metastases are many, then the worse the relapse-free survival will be. For this cohort of patients, it's utterly important to have pre-surgery, pre-op chemotherapy, which enables us to reduce the number of metastases and uh, uh, to have uh, better success of the whole volume of the planned surgery. It is very well known to everyone that metastasis, uh, simultaneous metastasis, which are uh, diagnosed alongside with the main tumor in the colon, in, in the bowels, uh, can be subdivided into three main cohorts. They're uh, resectable, about 10% of them, potentially resectable 20%, and non-resectable, uh, more than half of patients. So who should be surgically corrected or surgically treated? Quite naturally, this is, is uh, considered as a concilium, uh, which is multidisciplinary, including the radiologists, surgeons, and chemotherapists. And of course, we remember about the role of a pathologist in this chain of specialists. The potentially resectable patients, the patients who can, in whom we can achieve very good results by means of chemotherapy, these are very well placed uh, metastases, uh, I mean, in terms of, you know, adjacent vascular structures. And this is one of the examples of effective uh, treatment with bevacizumab. This is anti-VGFR therapy, which you know pretty well can be applied if we have 
K ROS mutation in a patient, and it has been demonstrated that in this combination of chemotherapy with a target uh, drug can improve uh, the volume of surgical movement within uh, the healthy tissue and it can improve the response. It can also, we can also achieve full pathological response in this particular uh, patient in the tumor itself, in the post-operative specimen, which again will reflect in the values or indication, indices of uh, overall and relapse-free survival. But you should remember, if you combine targeted therapy with uh, chemotherapy, especially if it, it, if it is about bevacizumab, then we have, certain, uh, we have to deal with certain uh, threat of bleeding, uh, poor wound healing. So that is why we have to follow uh, appropriate protocol, and we should administer it in a particular time after surgery. The algorithm of treatment with four stage with resectable sing, uh, simultaneous metastasis, I uh, have not. I decided not to translate it into Russian because these are absolutely new, brand new guidelines. And we have here the new option, which extrapolate extrapolated is extrapolated from the uh, locally um, advanced cancer of the of, uh, breast cancer. Uh, look again. We have four cycles uh, of two component chemotherapy and then a combination of uh, radiation therapy with capacitamine in days of radiotherapy 50 milligrams uh, twice per day with further resection of metastasis and the primary lesion. This is uh, the choice of a surgeon whether he is going to do it simultaneously or he is going to do it uh, with a time gap. Then, uh, Adjuvantly, we also have other four cycles of chemotherapy with a similar scheme. But things are much more complicated when we have the visceral crisis, when we have the manifested symptoms, which uh, significantly um, compromises the quality of life. This the, here, the uh, Intervention will definitely depend on the condition of a patient, and the options here are multiple. It could be from stenting up to combined chemotherapy treatment. Thus, quite naturally, chemotherapy helps surgeon in uh, uh, the treatment of uh, this cohort of patients. First of all, it improves the overall and relapse-free survival as a result of adjuvant treatment. Also, it transfers the non-resectable metastasis to the cohort of resectable, which again improves the um, in indices, uh, again, the values of relapse-free and uh, overall survival. And patients with stage four live longer than five years. The, at the moment, we have the triumph of uh, xeloplatin because the, uh, the uh, most uh, recommended chemotherapeutic regimens are uh, Folofox and Capox based on oxaloplatin. This, this combination, the combination is a new option. And what, where is our future? It's total no adjuvant therapy. It's TNT, total no adjuvant therapy, the very strong and very aggressive one. When at the first stage we plan chemotherapy, then we have new methods of chemo radiation therapy with newer more, uh, just much better modifiers of chemotherapy. Then we have surgery, and then we consider new target therapies that will improve the uh, survival even better. But you should remember pathological outcome, full pathological outcome, when we have no uh, tumor cells in the tumor. Is it a triumph or a tragedy? Is it a triumph for the, patient, for the doctor, for the physician, or is it a tragedy for the patient because the quality of life can be significantly compromised? So where is the tactics? What kind of strategy we stick to? Shall we wait or shall we operate? And I think that the next presenter will answer my rhetorical question. Thank you very much.